Hello everybody, Vinam Lion here and welcome back to another episode of Hello 3 marketing, reaction videos, whatever. Man, you know, uh, I really like recording these. I love uh, explaining stuff about, you know, game development and stuff. Uh, also, like a few of you guys mentioned uh, how you like, you know, to see behind the curtain a bit. I'm so passionate about gaming, guys. I love talking about it. So that's what I'm going to do again today. First of all, though, I want to thank Phoenix Vax yet again for having created that playlist and also others that I will be reacting to down the line. All right, boys. So last time we watched the Terra Incognita uh, Vidoc, which was very good. And next we will have... Dramatis Personae. Personae? Personae? Something. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> So you're no longer the Master Chief, you're the newest member of a squad of orbital drop shock troopers. They're the mysterious soldiers with the untold tale. We talked a lot about how could we still take people out of one character, put them into the body of another character, and not confuse people. An ODST Fair. takes the lessons of Halo 2 and feels a lot more natural. You're going from one ODST to another. It's not so jarring as it was with the Chief and the Arbiter. What the hell am I supposed to do with this inside a Covenant ship? Romeo the smart ass, or Mickey the kind of guy who just wants to look up. Allowing the player to step into the shoes of all of these different characters in the squad makes this a game about what happens to that squad. It's hard to create not just characters, but then give them a, a relationship. That's that's even tougher. Get this thing off of me. <laughs> You've got Buck, who's the squad leader. He's the most hard-boiled, hard-bitten, seen everything, been everywhere, a little bit more cynical than the other soldiers. Yeah. Because he survived the longest. No! They're gonna burn this city and then glass the whole planet! Covenant bastard! This is like race all over again! Buck is the guy. And they are right. That is a huge uh, challenge. And in my humble, personal, honest opinion, they did an okay job at it, but it's also hard when you take into consideration the different characters that they had to play around with, you know? Because, like, they mentioned their uh, Halo 2 with Chief and the Arbiter, but in that game, like, it was so different, right? It was another race entirely, so it's easier to let the players know and feel that you're actually playing another character because the difference there is so pronounced, you know? In ODST though, like, if they did not like tell me specifically which character I was playing uh, in the transition from the cutscene to the actual mission, I mean, they're still all humans and soldiers, right? So maybe like once you play the game a lot of times, you can learn their characters better, but I couldn't tell you which character I've played in any of the mission, you know, like I've played Buck twice or three times, like, I don't know. And they're, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that they're all basic ODST soldiers, right? There's not a lot of difference there at their core, you know? So obviously this will make that job harder to really like set them apart. However, like with the personalities that they have and everything, they still did an okay job. I think about as good as you could do with, you know, such similar characters, you know? Guy you want to be, you believe in him because he cares about his squad. All I care about now is getting my men out of this city. At the same time, he's distracted by this, this ex-girlfriend of his. Dare, she's an Oni operative. She takes over the squad. Replacements? This many years into the war, who isn't? At least they listen. To me. And they're not going to like what they hear. He wants to do his mission right, he wants to save his squad, and this whole time, Dare is, is there kind of poking him in the ribs. I never thought I'd see you again. Yeah? Well, here I am. There's something to be said about using Nathan and Trisha, who are, you know, really strong sci-fi actors. What we bring to the table hmm. is a lot of experience. A lot of spacefaring, a lot of changing trajectories, a lot of slip space ruptures. We know. Veronica definitely has balls. What was that for? Abandoning the mission. What mission? For me, it was about creating a credible history between the two of them. And by dipping into that history, I think that creates the relationship. Look, 
Don't start about my job. We both agreed to end it. That was years ago, Veronica. I'm a little fuzzy on it. <clears throat> Details. We talked about what it would be like to suddenly be in the body of some other character who was just in the cinematic you just watched. Say again, Buck. You're breaking up. I said stay put. I'm on my way. And that is true, though. The fact that you embody every single character and you play them at least once, it does make you want to see them all out unscathed, right? So in that sense, that is a good way to make players care about the characters is that you kind of feel like all of them are your character. So yeah, that's interesting. Then actually hear his voice coming out of your body. We missed our LZ. This grid is packed with Covenant. Be careful. I appreciate the concern. We call them Signets, and they're basically the, the last shot of a flashback cinematic right before you take control of Dutch or take control of Buck. And it's a it's a shot from first person. You can see your arms, you can see the weapon that you're holding. We use it as a kind of a direction indicator or a, a mission indicator. The player doesn't have control of the camera yet and the character is kind of easing him into that and, and leading him into where he needs to be going and what he needs to be doing. Very nice. You really kind of get inside some of these characters and I think that the signets help so it wasn't quite so jarring. Mickey, you always Yeah, me. true. It definitely eases into gameplay and also like, yeah, I hadn't yeah, thought of that because I mentioned uh, how I like uh, these almost seamless transitions into gameplay, right? But I hadn't thought of the other use, which is to really make you understand which character and ease that transition into another character. Right? That makes sense. Good stuff. The ODST as a kind of detective, uh, you know, lone gumshoe in the dark, mysterious city. Hey, let's drop one man that's not a Spartan on his own into a dangerous environment and let him really solve a mystery, let him find clues. We wanted to really get a different kind of Halo uh, look and feel from what we've seen before. Oh, they nailed that for One sure. One of the cool challenges was how do we make the city of New Mombasa in a, in a way a character in the game? The sound was, was critical in helping us really create that pacing and mood. We tried to make everything kind of quieter, especially when you were in the hub. We wanted the hub to be yeah. dark and rainy. Not a lot of music. Film noir feel. There was a point halfway through the production where the, the programmer said, we can't implement rain in the engine. Maybe we don't actually have rain falling all over the place, but we have to have the feel of that rain is in the distance. It's raining in that environment because of the sound guys. We also switched the surface types on the ground to kind of have kind of that wet, slappy footstep. As the thing started taking huh. life, of its own. In no way did I want to hear any Halo music reused. It really deserved to have its own flavor from beginning to end. That's nice. The score that Marty wrote really lent itself to both that film noir feeling and that feeling of loneliness that you have in the hub. Yeah, kudos to him because um, like the easy solution would have been to reuse a lot of music, right? But that game is so different. You need to have another soundtrack for sure. You make a difference musically from the daytime action scenes and always bring you back to the nighttime hub was a little bit of a challenge. First thing I said is no monks. There just cannot be monks in this thing. <laughs> I knew I could use a solo saxophone which has a really nice interaction with orchestral instruments. It's not something you normally hear with an orchestra. And it could huh. really just change the whole color and feeling that sort of carry you through the hub. As the game itself got bigger and bigger, I needed more and more music, which is why I have more gray hair. So that's how that goes. <laughs> there are some key elements that, that you'll find in the city. What if the phones rang? What if the ticket kiosks began to spit tickets and coins came out of uh, vending machines? What if the city was trying to communicate with you? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. What's going on? Sir. I'm really sorry about this. I was just trying to get out of the city. The thing that's the most different for me playing this game is the ability to randomly pick up the radio play story, which tells an entirely different story with entirely new characters. Old Mombasa, Dad, this is ship. Listen, sweetheart, I wanted to tell you at breakfast, but you left so early. So the ringing phone became this, this jumping off point for what eventually became the superintendent. Hmm, and interesting. Sadie's story too. 
car just came out of nowhere, smashed all the brutes. Was that you? Uh, my head. Uh, I thought airbags were supposed to stop you from getting hurt. Your tax dollars at work. So the superintendent's tale is this really neat evolutionary piece that you follow throughout the whole game. It's a very simple story when you get down to it, but it's told yeah. in an elegant way, in a complex way. You can understand yeah. and enjoy it. And also the player is the one that chooses to investigate, right? And they avoided one of the death traps of open world games, I find, which is like having a ton of collectibles, but ultimately you have to look them up in order to obtain them all, because there's no way a normal player on a normal playthrough would ever find them all, right? And if you watch my ODST series, I did end up using a guide to find all the audio logs. However, that's that was just because like, you know, on the channel while recording, I was just like, okay, let me make this uh, easier on myself. But with all the hints that they added in the game, I could easily see somebody who's like, you know what? I'm just gonna pay attention to all those clues and I'm gonna find them all. And the fact that they guide the player so well, I could realistically see somebody who obtains all the audio logs without looking them up on the internet, if they have the patience to do so, you know? Enjoy the ODST story if you don't pick up any of the telephones ringing in the city or any of the other objects. But if you do, you're going to be transported a little bit further back in time to the day before, but to a whole different world. Like a detective, you have to put it all together and it's the layers that, that make the story so interesting. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that you met the people of that city. You knew the stakes, what you were fighting for. Very nice. All right, and next we have Road to Recon. Let's go. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Lars Bakken, senior designer at Bungie. I've got with us Eric Osborne, community dude, <laughs> Chad Armstrong, another designer, and Dan Miller, a designer. We're here to talk about the Road to Recon. So there are seven oh, lots of designers. Total. They're all Vidmaster title. Getting all seven achievements, you will be able to finally unlock Recon and uh, leave me the hell alone. All right, so let's get started and what? we'll start with Light Switch. This is definitely my territory. Uh, Light Switch is pretty straightforward. You have to get uh, Lieutenant rank in any playlist in Halo 3 matchmaking. That How involves. much uh, EXP is that, Chad? 50 EXP, which means basically 50 victories, which just means it's a matter of time. It takes a couple hours at the most. Even if you're terrible, oh. you will get this achievement. Yes. You just have to put the time in. Definitely low-hanging fruit. As soon as you get that little message right there, right beep. <laughs> Next one, annual. Dan, you should kind of give us the lowdown on that. Yes. This is your baby. So annual, how you get it is you have to fire up a legendary game, four-player co-op on Xbox Live. Iron Skull on. Right? Iron Skull, yes. And uh, play through the game. At least play through the level. All right, the that's Halo 3, right? Fight Guilty Spark. Once Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Once oh, you, God. well, if you don't know that. That's Halo 3. Um, <laughs> once you fight Guilty Spark, come back out, and to the left, underneath the stairwell, is four ghosts. Make sure you Find get all four ghosts. And come I'm really confused. It says Halo 3 ODST, but it's not ODST. Okay, let's just watch it. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. Whatever. Kind of drive on on up. Be very careful. Getting yeah, it. This actually, the hardest part, part is really hard. Yeah. Hardest part is to get actually past this little area there. Um, you drive it all the way up to the trench run, and then straight through to the end, right? Yeah, and straight through the end. Now, keep in mind you're in iron, so you need to be play pretty. Uh, so if play any, like a team, yeah, if any can. one of the four guys dies, you will go back to the last right. checkpoint. So it could take you a while to get through this. I guess people are running it in what, like anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half? Yeah, something yeah. like that. I gotta Damn. say though, this is my favorite achievement. It's a cool one. It's so awesome. Did you see that ghost in the cinematic? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're awesome like that. <laughs> <laughs> so 7 on 7, this was another one we released with the uh, DLC update for Halo 3. Seven on the seventh. This is another one of mine. Uh, another matchmaking achievement. Uh, basically, on the seventh day of any month, you have to get seven EXP, a total of seven EXP in a playlist. That's not the same as going into a playlist you've been in before to get seven more EXP. Oh, that's because... Bungie has a thing for the number seven, right? So I'm assuming that's why they did that. Because I know, like, 
to kill a target automatically with the needler you need seven bullets and apparently like bungie are huge on the number seven so that achievement reflects that also interesting you have to have a grand total of 70 XP in that playlist. To make that a bit easier, uh, once a month we actually put a playlist up called 7 on the 7th. It's the 6th some months. No, yeah, it's it not. depends on it's what time zone you're in. No, it's... It's the 7th every month. Boom. Beautiful. Brain Pan. Brain Pan. Sweet. So this was another one we, uh, we gave out with DLC. One skull is hidden on every map. There's one skull hidden on every map. That is correct. You just have to go and forge. Make sure you forge because yep. they won't you show up be in the regular forge. game. Correct. Correct. Oh, tricky. Level 2 is in a really cool spot. Yeah, this, one, this one's pretty good. Uh, this one actually took me a while to find. I also like that we never tell each other where we hide things. Well, that's, that's <laughs> but, yeah. supremely important. Yeah. It's like, like, I think Dan and I were the only ones, or maybe I was the only one who knew where all of them were. They're, the testers knew, obviously. but This one's pretty good, too. We yeah. try to keep that stuff Testers close. know the project better than anyone else, by the way. We want it to leak. We want the fans to find these things. This one's just mean. It is mean. I placed it there on purpose to make uh, Shishka angry. And it worked. Sweet. I'm angry just looking at this. Citadel was mine, so was Longshore. Oh, that's where Citadel's one is. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about anybody else's roles but my own. Yeah, of course. <laughs> See, that's, that's good, Dan. Speaking of, right? This one's up that's Halo 3, though. You know, it's not ODSD. Cool 20 seconds working Whatever. on this one. Phoned this one in. <laughs> <laughs> True. Is that what it is on midship? I like Halo this one this the is, best, this actually. Is, this okay. one this is makes awesome. up. I take it back. This is the greatest skull ever. And look at look at what this guy did. There's Tube corner. What a... He's a lame... Well, he's, you know what, it's not, it's ingenuity Kids, is what it is. Don't cheat like this. Make the tunnel out there and do it right, right? Don't, don't cheat. Yeah. Spend three hours building a tunnel. Yes, three hours. You know what? What? What, what doesn't sound fun about building a tunnel and getting shot by a laser? If you don't want to earn your recon, go buy it online. <laughs> <laughs> I will sell. <laughs> Marty's. Classic. Classic. Oh, so this is cool. This one, we're up to ODST now. So this oh. one harkens back to the original Vidmasters Challenge, uh, a creed that people would take uh, playing Marathon back in the day, which basically meant that uh, you would never fire a gun, never use ammo. Could you honk Always. a horn in that? There were no horns. Oh, right. come so on. So if you're in a vehicle, say the Warthog, for example, do not uh, honk the horn because that actually counts as firing a weapon, which we know <laughs> we know is funny and seems strange. Little but bug. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a bug. But as you can see in the video, the guy's using the ghost and he's uh, boosting yeah. through, which is boosting, totally fine. Boosting is totally fine. Kind huh. of wussy, but totally Yeah, it's fine. kind of a wuss way to get through and get the achievement. <laughs> but, you know, points is points. Endure. All right. So this one is pretty interesting. Um, this is probably our hardest achievement, I would say, the Vidmasters. Probably, yeah. And it certainly it earns its name, I'd say. The goal here, basically, get is through the to fourth set. Get through the fourth set. Get to set five. We should give a little backstory because uh, originally endure was on legendary required. It's heroic now. And uh, get to set seven, or rather through set seven. And uh, yeah, as opposed to we, through set four. We quickly realized that we had to bring it down a little bit, otherwise no one would ever yeah. be able to get recon. <laughs> and we wanted, you know what? We wanted to give people recon. Yeah, so. yeah we do. That's, uh, we, I don't. Well, <laughs> I did. I'm just tired of the live inbox messages. And Deja Vu, this is another uh, D Miller special. How this one works is the same setup where you have to have Four player over live, legendary, and iron skull. The last and, level of the game. The last level of the game, highway, a coastal highway. Nice. The last thing you need to do is you need to not get in a vehicle. Uh, more specifically, you, oh. not, you cannot get into a scorpion or any type of warthog. Meaning, see, like a lot of the achievements that they talked about there are really interesting because you know it's been a couple of years now probably even more than a decade now that achievements are a thing right and there's definitely like a boring way to do them you know like complete chapter one complete chapter five complete the game on normal woo but you know achievements uh, are really interesting to me when they are trying to you know create additional gameplay uh with their requirements like that is a good example right doing like the final mission of the game without entering a vehicle because like achievements are really cool and they're fun to go to go grab but let's say you're a diehard fan of one game right do you prefer that the achievements are kind of like these where they you know uh give you additional challenges and 
enable you to have like a new look kind of like on existing levels or you just want them to be like really easy like i don't know like passing the game on easy on normal on hard and legendary that is a really great way to generate additional gameplay fun gameplay too that is different from you know the main regular golden path that most players will go through so i like that i appreciate that a whole lot Pupog. Gauss hog you can't get in any of those and you have to finish the level without but yeah. D, what what does that leave me it leaves you the delicious secret area. If you do not get in a vehicle and you run all the way to the first lower level, oh. you'll find two mongeese and four loaded rocket launchers. And these, when I say loaded, they are loaded. <laughs> a thousand rockets. Keep in mind, you're still very vulnerable. You're playing legendary still. And, and oh. you're playing iron. And iron skulls on. So just like the annual, if one of the players dies, you will go back to your last checkpoint. Damn. So be careful. Um, this can probably take anywhere from 45 minutes to almost two hours as well, depending on how, how slow you go, how slow how you go or how, how careful your team is. Yeah, fortunately, Coastal Highway is an easy, you know, just easy a walk in the park. Easy on Legendary. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I don't think it's, it's easy, man. The shooting here, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> so Chief, that seemed pretty, uh, that seemed pretty easy. And that's nice. Right? That's pretty all seven of them. Yeah, and then you go to Bungie.net, you make sure you got a profile link to your gamer tag, go into your service record. Oh. It's a huge button. You push the button and it'll unlock for you. And then oh, what's that? Please leave my Xbox Live inbox alone. Please. <laughs> There's your Vintmaster oh. Challenge walkthrough. Road to Recon. Oh, so... Oh, I like that. Wow, it's the first time I heard about that. Like, titles that need, like, multiple game... Achievements in multiple games to unlock. I like that concept a whole lot, though. That is very cool. What a neat concept. I like that. Send all your feelings about recon uh, to Irk the Red. That's awesome because it even encourages you to maybe go back and play the other games in the series. All right, and next we have the L3 ODST main menu screen. Let's go. Oh, it was already started. Okay. Yeah, the MCC menu is all right, but it lacks a lot of personality, you know? Oh, man. Just the sound alone, it's already better than the, the MCC version, you know? Yeah, that's the beginning of the game, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. All right, let's, let's skip ahead to the main menu, boys. Nice shot of the rookie. That's nice. Does it move around like uh, LO2? Not really, right? Okay, it stays focused on the rookie. That's fine though, it's still a better menu than the MCC one. Alright, we're not gonna watch everything, but interesting menu. And it fits the title too, you know, because like LO2 and LO3's uh, screen were really like wide open shots of like... Uh, either a new Mombasa or the Ark, right? So it's much more grand in its scale, so it makes sense for these titles. However, like in ODST, it's just focused on the rookie, a tight, cramped space, it's dark. It fits the title a lot. I actually really like it. Interesting. All right, and last, guys, we have the ODST legendary ending. Hell yeah, I want to know. Engineers. Is that a prophet? Okay, is that truth? He commands them. Where is that?
Wow, okay, hello, Markiplier. <laughs> Goddamn. I'm gonna need uh, you guys' help on that one. Uh, what was that? I need some more context. I don't think I will uh, figure it out on my own. Uh, so yeah, leave uh, leave some information down below, guys. Uh, hey, also, if you like my ODST journey and my reaction videos to all the ODST marketing campaign, uh, leave a like down below. It will help the channel a lot. And on that note, guys, I will see you in another episode. Have... A good one.